movies have always been made in programs like Houdini, 3DS Max, and Maya. These are household names that have been key to creating all the great films we've watched. For a long time, it seemed impossible to change the way movies were made because most of the industry veterans started out in Maya or 3DS Max. Asking them to switch to a relatively new tool like Blender was nearly impossible. But now, as many of those veterans are retiring, a new generation is stepping up, one that grew up with Blender and is finally getting the chance to direct. A good example of this shift is the movie Everything Everywhere All at Once. Most of the visual effects in this film were made in Blender, and the famous donut even made an appearance as an Easter egg. One of the biggest reasons it's been hard for studios to switch to Blender is because of all the specialized tools they've built for their existing software. Creating a movie from scratch is already expensive, especially if it's packed with visual effects and CGI. Most studios have invested years into developing custom tools, like water simulation systems, city generators, traffic simulators, and crowd systems, specifically for programs like Maya or 3DS Max. But little by little, the Blender community has been catching up. Developers are building a library of similar tools for Blender, and with each new release, those obstacles are gradually being removed. Usually in the beginning stages of a movie, especially in concept art and pre-visualization, pre directors are less strict about which programs are used, especially in the pre stage. At this point, artists are free to use any software to create demos, renders, and concept art to figure out the best tool for the job. It's at this stage that applications like Blender often fall behind in the movie making process. This is the research and development stage where technical artists experiment to find the best ways to animate complex elements like Davy Jones's tentacles or to determine the optimal method to render Thanos's skin in contrast to others. Since many technical artists have a background in Houdini and Maya, they tend to favor these tools over Blender. You can solely blame them for Blender failing as an make it as an industry standard software. Whenever a chance arises to experiment with a complex problem, they naturally go with what they're familiar with. The 3D software you choose really depends on the type of movie you're making. For example, don't expect to make the new Avatar The Way of Water in Blender. Blender does have a fluid simulation system, but it's not quite advanced enough for the kind of massive underwater environments you see in the film. You could get some decent results with an add-on like Flip Fluids, but don't expect to do anything on the scale of Avatar. Yes, Flip Fluids is the best add-on for fluid simulations in Blender, but it's not built for the kind of large-scale complex simulations you'd expect in a big Hollywood production. But I'm guessing you're not making a Hollywood movie either if you're watching this. A lot of times, filmmakers revise their scripts based on what is possible within their budget. Uh, for example, Instead of making a movie about an expansive water world like Avatar, you, you could remake Pompeii. Blender handles explosions and smoke simulations quite well, especially when paired with add-ons like RBD Lab. It's fantastic for creating detailed, rigid body simulations, including fracturing, breaking things apart, and even metal deformations. It's what many Blender artists use for the kind of destruction you'd see in a movie like Pompeii. Think debris, smoke, wreckage, and more. This is why a lot of indie sci-fi films are either post-apocalyptic or futuristic. Not necessarily because they are easier, but because they are achievable. Most of the tools necessary to make a sci-fi or post-apocalypse setting are accessible. For example, you can use motion tracking to add futuristic buildings to your scenes, add spaceships, or extend your environments. Blender has a built-in motion tracking system that works well, but if you need more automation, FlaxTrax is a great alternative for complex environments that may not track well with the built-in system. To make the post-apocalyptic world feel more real, you can add atmospheric fog and scatter smoke elements everywhere using an add-on like Smoke Elements. The same artist who created Smoke Elements also made City Builder, a city generator with a post-apocalyptic feel. This artist focuses heavily on this genre, so if you're creating a post-apocalypse movie, you may want to check out his other add-ons, including the Zombie Horde Simulator, which lets you populate your cities with zombies. This is what makes Blender such a fantastic piece of software. It's designed with the understanding that most of its users don't have a big budget and are likely working solo or in small teams. That's why its add-on community is its greatest strength. Unlike other programs, where studios develop in-house proprietary tools that are locked behind NDAs and never see the light of day, Blender's community is open, collaborative, and constantly sharing.
Nowadays, it's no surprise that almost every artist you meet has either used, is using, or will use Blender at some point. The accessibility and flexibility it offers make it the go-to choice for many up-and-coming creators. And as these artists transition into more prominent roles, some even becoming movie directors, Blender's adoption in the industry is bound to grow. We're already seeing the shift happen, and it's exciting to think about what the future holds for Blender in mainstream filmmaking. So to answer the original question, should you make a movie in Blender? The answer is an obvious yes. Many have, and many are making movies in Blender, mostly short films to showcase a director's ability to execute a project on a tight budget and deadline. Most of the time, Blender's contribution in a movie may go unnoticed, like much VFX work, because there's so much going on, and rarely is a scene created with a single program. It's difficult to find a shot in a movie credited solely to Blender, but rest assured, Blender is being used in many films today for small, often overlooked, tasks. What a lot of people want to see is a complete movie made in one program from start to finish, but that's impossible, even for industry standard programs like Maya, 3ds Max, or Houdini. A single scene could pass through several applications from start to finish. You might start your modeling in Blender, sculpt in ZBrush, retopo in 3ds Max, texture in Substance, animate in Maya, and render in Arnold. Then there's compositing, editing, concept art, all of which might involve different applications. Surprisingly, only Blender can handle all of this in one package, from modeling, sculpting, animating, retopo, texturing, and more. Many artists have completed entire projects in Blender, and with the help of add-ons and procedural generators and geometry nodes, this workflow is becoming more common. So, should you make a movie in Blender? Absolutely. Take a look at the examples of short films made with Blender, like Skywatch and Spring. And if you're ready to become a technical artist and shape future of 3D applications, Start your journey today by building procedural tools with geometry nodes. My friend Top Channel 1 on 1 has a new course that he's constantly updating with new content. Check it out.